which is just kind of fun to do this. Safety never takes a day off. Butt splice. <laughs> what do you think of the flannel, huh? Welcome back everybody. We have, it's actually probably mid-morning now and I really didn't want to video today but it turns out we're doing some uh, pretty dangerous stuff. So Ethan and I decided we're going to get get this stuff on video. So Ethan is doing our tender trailer. He's wiring it up. I'm also working on wiring, also working on wiring, but the slightly more dangerous kind. So let me show you what's going on. Okay, so we used to have Holstein cows in our barn and we milked. We got rid of those years ago, but we have, through the additions throughout all the years, we have all these electrical boxes and we're trying to kind of get rid of the stuff we don't use and we're having problems with the water heater. So we're going to go in this box here and uh, see if we can get this water heater to work. Okay, here's our box. This is our water heater, but when we turn the water heater off, we still had power to it, so there was two there was two breakers here above it that were that are bad. So we're gonna change those. I had to run down and get some dielectric grease. I'm also gonna pull out some of this stuff for like the milk compressors and uh, milk tank control because we don't need those anymore, and it's probably more dangerous to have those installed. Okay, main breakers off. Okay, so I don't know which this one is, but it was the top one. It was either the lights or the... Okay. It's not the lights. Whoa. It's not that outlet. So you're gonna see me use this a lot. This tells me if there's power to that that wire and I just check a lot just for safety okay let's try this one okay those are the lights I know this one goes up also yeah I know I don't know. I know this one here so we found what wire this is and I'm just double checking my connection in there. I'm gonna add a little bit more dielectric grease because this room had a lot of moisture in it because it is a milk house. And uh, that should help with the moisture situation. And I'm pretty sure this wire is the receptacle. Okay, so receptacle's on. Um, that one and this one I'm not sure what they are, and I'll show you what I'll do with those in a second, but we're gonna turn the main breaker back on. Get my, gosh, I lose everything so easily. My tick trace, that little thing I was, okay, that works. Okay, now can you turn the water heater on? No, is it too sharp? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now when I turn the water heater off, Oh. You still don't know where the, this one and this one go. Okay. I don't know where they go. I know they both go up to this conduit. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just put a wire knot on them. I'm going to take this one out, this one out, these, all these out. Okay. So the the ones I'm removing here, I'm just labeling so that uh, we know where they go. So if like next year we're going to pull the wires on it. We, uh, we can fi actually find a little quicker what goes where. So I just labeled it, put wire nuts on the end, and kind of tuck it in the bottom of the box so it's safely out of the way. Okay, so the main reason we're in here doing this job is because this water heater uh, kept tripping. And at first we thought it was the heating elements that are in there, but upon Closer, in closer inspection, I came in here to test uh, that there was no power to the water heater uh, because we thought maybe there was. 
and we were going to be working on the wire. So just to be safe, we we're going to turn the power off and just triple check it with that, that little tool I got. Well, it turns out even with this breaker off, there was still power there. So it's like, oh, why is there still power when this breaker's off? And that clearly went for the water heater. So upon further inspection, there was two breakers right above it that ran the lights and a receptacle. And those breakers were bad. I'm not sure how that works, but those breakers being bad still fed power to that that one. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we replaced it with two new breakers, and uh, now it seems to be working. But in the meantime here, this used to be our old milk house, so we had all kinds of controls in here for the, the milk tank, which is kind of where I was standing. We took it out. Uh, there was control systems for the pipeline, control systems for the milk tank. All that is run off of these breakers right here and you can see they're kind of corroded i'm going to actually remove those put filler plates on the cover and uh make sure that's safe and the reason they're corroded like that is because uh, this is a wet environment or it was for many many years when we were milking cows so having that uh look like that is not a surprise to me but i'll take those breakers out i'll label the wires i'll put wire nuts over the wires and we'll tuck them in that box and everything will be off and safe and we're just kind of going around checking that there's no power anywhere to stuff that doesn't need it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, uh, but something that's got to be done. There's multiple uh, boxes like this in this facility, in this barn. So um, it gets kind of tricky as far as finding where that wire gets power from, where it sends power to, all that fun stuff. So we're not quite done in here. We need some parts because when we put the... When we put the cover back on, there's going to be a bunch of open spaces like that one right there. And that is very, very dangerous. But they make filler plates, it's called, that snap into the cover. And that's what we're going to use to protect everybody from uh, getting hurt. So, well, let's head back to the shop and keep going on that trailer wiring. Oh, and it's a very nice brisk minus 15 degrees out right now. With the wind chill, I thought I heard minus 25 to minus 35. So there's not a whole lot happening outside today. But the sun is shining, so it's actually a little bit I'm outside walking back and forth. It's it's not too bad. Back from lunch, I picked up a new 20 amp breaker while I was there. And I picked up a bunch of these filler plates because when we pull those other breakers out, um, that main panel is going to be exposed so they make these filler plates to snap in there so nobody gets their fingers or tools and stuff in there uh, to keep it safe so the next thing is let's go get those other breakers ripped out and get everything labeled and tucked away real nice and safely and that project will be done we can get back in here and what am i going to do when i get here we're going to keep wiring up uh I had ethan do those lights this morning and now i'm just going to wire it all up and make sure everything works so let's get it done Okay, back in what we call the milk house. All right, so let me just run down the plan, not to explain it to you guys, but to make sure my brain knows what's going on. I need to remove one, two, three breakers, put cover plates on and label everything. Okay, and we're gonna set a brand new break breaker inside. All right, I know I have a Milwaukee light. Huh. Boom. Power is on. Main power's off. I must use my little tick trace tool. Okay, everything's off. I just removed this breaker. I clipped the wires, put a wire nut on it, I labeled it, and now I'm going to just fold them in here. So that's what I'm going to do here for the next, these two here. Take those out and do the exact same thing. So I'll get back with you here as soon as I get that done. That's it guys, all wrapped up. 
Um, let's get these tools cleaned up and taken back down to the shop. Everything seems to work pretty good. So let's consider that job done. All right, now that we're back in the shop, warm shop, hi, my dad. Um, we can continue working on this tender. We're just wrapping up here some lighting. I have the lights that were previously on this sprayer. Um, got them back. I got them mounted under under here on there, but on that side. Sorry, got them over here on this side. So I just got to get them to work. So we have flashers at night. We have brake lights. And then also, I have this little 12 volt air compressor here that needs to be wired into the auxiliary uh, power that are on most tractors. That way I can blow out all these lines when needed. And then uh, earlier today I was just working on this valve uh, manifold, this valve bank here, uh, getting the quarter inch push to connect fitting in there for blowing out the system. And then I have to put a couple uh, inch and a quarter to two inch uh, adapters on here so everything works. So that's the plan and this thing is almost done but for the meantime let's try to get this stuff wired up and i actually am one of the few guys maybe i don't know that uh, enjoy to do wiring what's really cool is the wiring that i'm using is left over from a project we took apart a couple years ago i just threw the wiring in a bin not that i save everything but that wiring is fairly expensive so i threw it in one of those plastic totes and uh figured there'd be a day when I probably could use it and today's the day and this is the project ah you know what's not good my electrical meter my little tester that i need to test which one has power i left up in that milk house and shoot this one only has four wires and just from past experience i know one's a ground one's a left turn right turn and one is the tail lights. So, brake lights, wearing and brakes would need to be added in. There's only four wires in here. <sighs> I really like this because it was a big accordion too. It would have worked really good. Tell you what, it sure would be nice to do it right the first time and just have it done. Or I can find another wire, which actually I think I have one in there, but it doesn't have this accordion. Which is kind of nice for the tractors, because you know every tractor is a little different that you hook it up to. I do, I have a wire right over there that I could use. Because I, I need brake lights, plus I also need that auxiliary power wire to hook up to this air compressor. There's just no way this is going to work. All right, I got this other big heavy jacketed wire and there is three six seven wires in here that's everything I need this came off a trailer that's everything I would need and then some so looks like that's what we're doing all right so here's the plan I have wire we are going to disassemble this plug I need the plug we're gonna sacrifice this accordion stretchy dealy or just a regular jacketed wire and it's unfortunate but that's what we got to do also i still have to venture back out and find that electrical meter oh man i'm never on the right side of the hitch that i need okay let's just stay over here scratch that we have to use this other one that i have here this one is crimped these wires are crimped and molded. A lot of times they just have like a set screw that you just and uh, you can get them apart and kind of put the anyway, it's not going to work. And this one's really dirty. So looks like we got to disassemble it and clean it up. So dad just said that uh, my sister's dog chewed up the wires on the, the garage door opener eyes because that dog's crazy. So now we got to go fix that. You got what we need? Got what we need. I'm sure it's going to be real nice and chilly. This is the electrical day. It's electrical day. Maybe not electrical nightmare. Yeah. She also got a hold of no. a box. She also chewed this up. She also chewed up the tether from the Set Kids snowmobile, which is not good. 
Oh, she's dead here? Jeez. Oh, just the wiring. Okay, that'll be pretty easy. Yeah, but. Project done. Anybody else got any electrical issues that we can take care of? All right, guys, that's it for today. The electrical saga is complete. I think we'll just continue this uh, video tomorrow. What do you think of the flannel, huh? Pretty toasty warm. I think tomorrow's supposed to be even colder. What's the temperature tomorrow? It's tomorrow and we're gonna continue with this wiring on this tender that we built. And I will have to use a complete new wire. Like I said yesterday, we can't use this, this nice accordion one. So I am gonna go ahead and get this wired up. I'm waiting on some pigtails from the parts store. All right, well, it turns out I can't use this, the one that I thought I could because um, inside here, there's only four set screws. There's seven holes, but four set screws. I need like five or six of them. And the ones that are there are rusted in there. So, a new one, a new one is in order and I'm not helping Ethan on that tractor. I repeat. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the valve bank here. I'm gonna continue working on this guy. Um, I will have to order some parts so I won't be able to finish it, but I'll at least get I'm hoping to get like the airline blowout thing connected and then get the parts that I actually need uh, ordered. I'm gonna see if I have any parts here before I make some, make an order, see what I got in my bin. Looks like there's one right here and one right there. Nope, inch and a half. Ooh, that's too big. All right, so after much messing around with this valve bank here, one valve was cracked. I found so I have to order a new one anyway and most of the all these are inch and a quarter the threads and the tubing which really doesn't work well with um, two inch stuff so I ended up just ordering all new inch and a half um, valves and fittings because inch and a half here's the inch and a half T they're the exact same dimensions as the inch and a quarter stuff which is good because that means all these valves will line up with the cover plate because there's a plate that goes over this. So that's the plan, but that means I can't get this done today. So we're back onto the wiring because the parts, the parts place delivered all the wiring and I can get back on that. It made a nasty crunching noise. I don't How's know if that? it's cracked. Yeah, maybe a little, I don't know. Oh, it went crunch. Put the new ones in there gently. Yeah, gently. Okay, I got a new, got a new plug, which is just kind of fun to do this. I got all new pigtails and new LED lights. So safety first, people, right? Safety never takes a day off. All right, I'm gonna make my connection with a six pin weather pack. I just happen to be like a wiring wizard. aficionado, not a wizard. I just like wiring. So I have like these kits. I have like the Deutsch plugs and the weather packs and what's the other one? Amp, amp plugs. So we're gonna make it look kind of neat. No butt splices whatsoever. I said butt, butt splice. <laughs> Think about it. So the valves and like this valve bank, that's a separate order. I actually gotta go order that now. And that'll be here in just a couple days. And then the last thing is kind of wiring, not wiring, but plumbing that air 
that air system and making sure that works. So, yeah. Um, also, this carburetor shot on this engine. I ordered a new one already. So besides ordering some fittings, some valves, some hose, you know, for the new, the new th way things are going to be routed, and that carburetor, that's pretty much all we got stuck into this bad boy. Everything else I recycled and reused. Oh, and some new LED lights, which I think are a must uh, just for safety. So yeah, I think we're doing well. Uh, this is what plumbing turns into after I just start a small project. And now you can't see that platform, of course. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to touch up some spots that I welded with some paint again so nothing rusts any more than it has to. I got all these done here. There's one three inch fill, a two inch fill, and a two inch discharge that will go out from that pump that's on board. Okay, everybody get that? Good. A mouse got trapped in a cheese curd bag. Huh. <laughs> that's not actually the case, guys. We have one semi that's in cold storage that seems to attract a lot of mice. How many so far this year? Uh, just from fall. Uh, just from fall when we put it away, 11 mice. And only in that truck. Everything else is clean. All the tractors, uh, nothing's in it. So, which is fine with me. But here's the trick right there. Peanut butter. They love it. <laughs> okay, from here on, I'm going to uh, probably continue this tomorrow again because this wiring, it's just, it's so tedious, like installing weather pack plugs and getting all the wiring exactly the way it needs to be. Wiring, it's just, it's a very tedious process and it's taking me a long time. So the amount of good content I can get is very limited. Five, six, so phrase seven, seven, eight, nine. Hey!